is Peter and today we will be unboxing components for a little bit overkill Hackintosh. So, for this build we chose a motherboard from Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 5 series. Our motherboard has 1151 LGA socket or LGA 1151. It supports DDR4s up to 3466 uh, megahertz uh, on overclock profile. Um, then we have here, as we can see, we have eight channels um, of HD audio and also supported uh, SPDIF. Uh, here we have two uh, Ethernet or uh, yeah, two Ethernet ports. One is from Intel and another one is uh, Killer E2201. Both of them are Gigabit Ethernet. Uh, here we have two uh, USB 3.0, two USB 2.0, and here we have a new interface which is called USB 3.1 and USB-C, which is predicted to be the next generation of uh, USB ports for mobile phones and many different devices as uh, external hard drives and so on. Now this motherboard uh, is actually running uh, with integrated graphics cards so we have a display port and also an HDMI port. User manual. Um, here we have one, two, three, four SATA cables which will become really handy for the hard drives and well for the hard drive and SSD. Uh, here we have a small bridge which, is, which uh, will help us connect the front panel. Uh, here we have a shield for the back panel to our tower. And here we have uh, the connection to the secondary graphics card for uh, NVIDIA Sly. Uh, next we have uh, the 6th generation of uh, Intel Core i7. Um, 6700K, which is the unlocked version. This is also the newest generation of i7 um, Intel processors, uh, and it runs on socket LGA1551. I will just remove it from the carton block, but I will not remove it from the plastic casing, because we will be installing this processor in our next video, where we will actually build the computer. Uh, it's actually a quad core, but it is running on eight threads. The base frequency of the CPU is four gigahertz, but on a turbo boost, it's actually running up to 4.2 gigahertz. As I mentioned before, we have the unlocked version, which leaves us with a plenty space for overclocking, and we will see that in our next video. Next, we chose a graphic card from, also from Gigabyte, which uh, is running on GeForce GTX uh, 970 overclock. This graphic card actually has 4 gigabytes of DDR5 uh, SD RAMs. Okay, this graphic card comes with the Vinforce 3 uh, cooling system from Gigabyte. The base clocking starts at 1178 MHz and the turbo boost ends up to the 1329 MHz. GTX 9E actually comes on a turbo boost on a lower clocking than this one. Um, I'm not saying that the GT, uh, that this one can outrun GTX 980, it's not true, but for the same clocking and approximately 200 euros, or in America around 180 dollars less, I think it's a pretty good trade-off and it also leaves us uh, a good space for overclocking of this specific graphics card. This graphic card also is uh, we are ready for virtual reality, for example, it supports DirectX 12, of course, and its resolution can run up to 4096 by 2150. We have one, two, three display ports, uh, one HDMI and two, well, one DVI-D and one DVI-I. This leaves us with two possible configurations for three or more screens. We can use combination of DVI-D, DVI-I, DisplayPort and HDMI. Or we can use combination of three DisplayPorts, one HDMI and DVI-I. The rest of the packaging is, as usual, some converters from Molexis uh, to our power feed to the, gra to the graphics card. Um, 
which with our power supply will not really be needed but then of course drivers and probably some utilities and a quick guide how to install and what are the actual properties of that. Next we have for example RAMs which are from Corsair, Vengeance, LPX, VDR4s. They are running on um, 2666 megahertz. Uh, our motherboard also supports uh, dual channels so we will still have plenty of space uh, for um, future expansion of the RAM because we have uh, two 16 GB RAM sticks that will equal in 32 GB of RAM. Next we can mention our uh, power supply which is from Corsair RM850i. Uh, it is a very powerful power supply. It has modulated cables and it also has specification 80% gold plus. Stickers, zip ties. Oh, I would never expect zip ties. That is very handy. And also we have the wall plug power supply cable. A nice package with accessories. We will get back to those very shortly. Here is our power supply. All of the sockets are modulated, uh, meaning if we want to use, um, for example, two hard drives, we can just plug in two hard drives. Um, we don't have to have uh, an accessory or redundant cable in our tower, which will make the cable management much easier. And if we did not have uh, water cooling for our CPU, it would also make uh, an airflow inside of the, our tower uh, much better. Therefore, we would have better cooling, we, would have not, we wouldn't have too many cables, and it would just make life easier in general. Here we have the standard ATX pinout with, uh, which connects to the power supply. This goes to our motherboard. Uh, here we have some PCI Express feeds for graphics card. Here we have one for CPU connection, the main feed uh, to CPU. Another one for CPU. And of course, our favorite Molex from Molex to uh, PC. Uh, yeah, this is just a typical Molex. Oh, now we have some uh, hard drive feeds. Uh, another one for SATA. Here we have a cable which is used for the Corsair link. Then we have another one for the hard drives or SATAs. Here we have, um, oh this is very interesting, I would not expect uh, uh, a re um, adapter or reduction from Molex to floppy. In these ages, floppy? Okay. So, here are all the accessories, as we can see it's a big pile of cables, which there is always not enough Molexes or SATA connectors, so I'm fairly happy that we have all of those connections. Next we can mention our uh, water cooling system, uh, which is pre-filled and closed water cooling from Fractal Design. Uh, it's Fractal Design Kelvin S24. Uh, this cooling system uh, will perfectly fit our tower, which is also from Fractal Design and it's Define R5. Uh, let's start with the fans that I just mentioned. Those are 12 centimeters from Fractal Design Silent Series HP and it can run up to 70, 1700 RPMs. And the rating is 26.9 decibels, which is pretty good. I like the shielding on the cable. Anyway, that's one. Here we have the second one. Now let's move to the actual radiator with the pump and the socket and everything together. So here is our radiator and here we have the actual pump. Uh, well inside of it is a pump and uh, as far as I can see it's a little bit bigger than I expected so a small reservoir. As we can see the copper plate is very big, very, very big. 
which will uh, help the heat conduction from the CPU we want to achieve here. <laughs> That's like the main point. Here we have some reductions for the fans. If we want to connect one, well, both of the fans to one connector, pretty cool. And of course the mounting bracket uh, for our socket. Thermal paste from Fractal Design. We'll be probably using an X4 anyway. Uh, spring, springs, washers, uh, and some nuts and yeah, this is for AMD package, so we will not be needing that. Um, extra screws and uh, um, hex wrench. Next, for the data storage, uh, we have one terabyte Western Digital Bloom, uh, which is running on 7200 RPMs uh, and has a 64 megabytes of cache. It's a standard SATA connection and pretty much standard uh, hard drive. As a storage, we chose SSD Samsung Evo 850, which is 500 gigabytes big. So, inside, we only have the SSD drive, which comes in 2.5 inch uh, format, slim format, as we can see also in, on a slim version of the of hard drives. Installation guide, CD, but probably a one-stop install navigator, pretty much manual and software, and maybe a firmware update, but I would not be surprised if it wasn't there. The Fractal Design is actually my favorite brand of towers. Um, so, the front presentation, as we can see here, this is the version without the window. Uh, it actually comes in three versions, uh, titanium, black, and white. Um, our customer chose white, therefore, we have white. Uh, also, the front is soundproof. Uh, then we have a filter for front fans uh, that are pushing air into our box. We have headphones, microphone, of course. Then we have uh, two 2.0 USB, USB 2.0 and two uh, USB 3.0. Uh, this one uh, especially is used actually for uh, filtering of the inlet air for the PS uh, for the power supply we have one two three four openings for the fans one is from the side well if you will choose the window uh, version with the window on the uh, on the side you will not have this opening uh, both doors both sides are soundproof also and the doors are a little bit heavy but that's because of the soundproofing it comes with two fans, one is installed in the front, one is installed in the back. Uh, here we have uh, the connections to the front panel. Now we can actually take the middle part out, which was also available in the previous version. However, it was not available for uh, the bottom one and also uh, the, for the bottom section and also from the top section, for the top section. Just as this one, the bracket for uh, the Blu-ray ROM or whatever you want to put in the front panel, uh, the fan control or something like that. It is also screwed from the other side and here and also from here. And we will also open the other side and see uh, how much room we have for the cable management which will be hidden on this side. And again, nice soundproofing. Here we have very nice cable management with uh, the ties from the fractal design. Here we have all the plugs that we need from the, uh, for the, uh, yeah, for the forearm panel. They find our five accessories. And if we open this box, it's pretty much zip ties again. Ah, we have some uh, vibration rubbers which go underneath the uh, hard drive when we when we will be mounting them inside of those brackets. Nice practical design logo. Um, zip ties, screws for hard drives, screws for fans, screws for pretty much everything. And I I think we will not need anything more anyway. So stay tuned for next video when we will be actually 
uh, building the computer and also putting the components inside our tower. And in a later video we will be installing Windows, doing some benchmark, seeing how the video is, uh, how the computer is working. And later on we will uh, also show you how to prepare or how to decompile and recompile your own BIOS, flash it and install a Hackintosh. Stay up for next videos and as always, thanks for watching.